Hello, and welcome to episode two of A Pod About a Pod, a podcast about podcasts featuring commentary, critique, and sneak peeks of a different show every episode. I'm your host, Jordan Pierce, and today I'm very excited to share with you an excellent true crime podcast. But before I jump into that, there's a couple things I wanted to chat about first. To start off, you may have noticed a bit of a bump in our audio quality, and if so, that would be because I am using a brand new microphone. My sister Cameron got me a new piece of equipment for my birthday. It's a K669-K669B USB mic from Fifine Technology, or Fifine Technology, not sure on that. But either way, he's a compact, sleek-looking little dude. Um, From what I can tell in my early trials of plugging him in and trying him out, he sounds great. So I just wanted to thank my sister for this awesome birthday gift. Thank you, Cameron, for improving the listener experience for everybody here. Uh, It's much appreciated. I also want to apologize real quick for the fact that this upload is a day late. Uh, Usually, I want to stick to a schedule of every other Sunday for my uploads, and I think that moving forward that is going to be more feasible for reasons I'll talk about in a moment. But this past week was just kind of crazy, and I probably could have rushed and busted something out and uploaded yesterday, but I thought about it and I figured I would rather take my time and be more thoughtful and have a more polished, finished product than rush things and have something subpar that I turned out just for the sake of being on time. I'm well aware of the fact that my listenership is rather small for the moment, and that's just fine. Everybody starts somewhere. So instead of beating myself up about it, I figured y'all would understand that I'm just trying to have a higher quality episode, and that's why I took a little bit more time. So I did want to have an accountability around that, though, and own up to it. I also wanted to have a real quick chat about the coronavirus only because it would almost seem stranger to not mention it, considering that it's a global pandemic at this point. Um, I probably don't have anything terribly original or insightful to say, but I did want to mention that whatever guidelines are being passed down by the government, please heed them. It's not only about your health, it's about the health of our most vulnerable in our populations, which are the babies and the grandparents and our friends who are immunocompromised. So please remember that even though it's annoying and inconvenient to have college classes be moved online or have bars and restaurants get closed, it's for the greater good. And we have to remember to take care of ourselves and take care of each other. Humans are resilient. We'll get through this. And one positive that all of us can take comfort in is quarantines are perfect podcast weather. Can't really argue that. So you're in the right place. I'm happy you're here. This is practically like you and I are hanging out in real life and you accidentally said the word podcast and I'm about to launch into my favorite true crime podcast, which is called Cult Leader. And one quick thing before I do, I have a disclaimer. This is a true crime podcast, so that means it's about bad people who are doing bad things. And this is just sort of a COA. Cult Leader is a true crime podcast that features graphic descriptions of violent and sexual criminal activity. This is not an episode for sensitive stomachs. During the selection of my sneak peeks, I tried to pick segments of the show that are still representative of Cult Leader's content without choosing the most extreme examples. That being said, my intention isn't to scare anyone off. This is an awesome podcast and I'll be spending the rest of my time telling you why. However, the subject matter is certainly not for everyone. I do not recommend listening if you're eating something at the moment or if you're around children who are under the age of 13. By the way, I will use the nickname Podcast X or Pod X from time to time to refer to the show within the current episode. So today, if I start talking about Podcast X, just know I'm still talking about Cult Leader, just trying not to sound quite so repetitive. All right, let's get started with what to expect. Some of the things you might encounter if you decide to follow Cult Leader are animal sacrifice, child abuse, bestiality, incest, necrophilia, decapitation, dismemberment, rape, sodomy, honestly the list goes on. There's some very vivid examples that are coming to mind, uh, (laughs) but I don't know if you guys would want me to expand upon that or not. So that's why I'm giving that very general list. One thing I enjoy about his formula is it's not very structured, but in some ways does follow a 
you know, repeated pattern. Spencer usually starts off his episodes with brief updates of current true crime news. If there happens to be a case that's in, you know, the public eye, he usually gives an update if there's one to be had. Otherwise, he often opens with opinions of his about creepy, spooky things he's watching on Hulu or Netflix. He often mentions other resources for people to explore if they want to dive deeper into a particular story he is featuring. So for example, the act on Hulu is based off of the same story of Gypsy Rose, who he covers in an episode of his podcast. So that's a cool tie-in I feel like he gives the people who follow him if they want to continue to saturate themselves in the details and the facts of whichever case they're talking about. Now, I will give you your first sneak peek of what you can expect from Cult Leader this snippet is from episode 18 enjoy if you've seen the texas chainsaw massacre uh psycho silence of the lambs probably a lot more you probably crossed paths with a character that was loosely based off of the story of a man named ed gain tonight's story is about ed gain and it's one of those stories that i find like equal parts interesting and gross it's one of those ones where you're like okay stop talking but also tell me more, which pretty much describes my personal relationship with true crime. I'm, like, always so fascinated by the atrocities, and, like, the worse something is, the more I'm, like, don't tell me, but, like, okay, tell me, but, ah, why did you tell me that? <laughs> it's like, oh, my God, this is awful. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you guys feel that way, too. And again, I think it's just natural. The human mind wants, wants to know. I know that Ed Gain has been like the basis of characters for like a ton of different things but once you hear the story it i don't know a part of it made me feel for him which, which is generally the case i feel like so many of the people that i talk about are people that had really hard lives and it it makes it a little bit more not understandable in the sense of like why they did what they did but you can see that these were people who acted out of a place of frustration a lot of the time um, a lot of these people experienced a ton of abuse and it's definitely not an excuse for what they did and what their actions were but I think it helps to kind of like paint a picture of how their path kind of came to be the path that they went down. So there was a taste of how Spencer tends to introduce and contextualize the subjects of his various podcasts. That one was, of course, about Ed Gein, and he starts in his childhood and descriptions of his parents and things of that nature, and then follows a chronology that depicts the events that contribute to the reputation of whomever he's talking about. So it tends to evolve in that way, and I find it fascinating because Spencer finds this through line all of us can relate to, you know, the essence of growing up, going to school, a relationship with your mom or your dad. All of us can relate to these different aspects of life in our own way, and to find out these details in these notorious people, I find adds a layer of relatability that is very interesting and compelling. It makes you more engaged and more uh, invested in what's going to happen. And even if you know the ending, some part of your brain kind of suspends that knowledge, so you're just right on the edge of your seat. Cult Leader features the one solo host, so that's a similarity between Podcast X and the podcast you're listening to right now. And I'd be lying if I said that Spencer Henry wasn't a huge inspiration to me to get this podcast off the ground. In all honesty, I considered doing a co-host or an interview style podcast, but I really just wanted to be reliant on myself, good old unreliable me. And I figured if he could do it, if he could just rock his personality and chat to himself alone in a dark room with a microphone, why couldn't I? So thanks, Spencer, for giving me the bravery to try this out. Flying solo, I feel like it's going all right. How do you guys feel? Episodes range from topics like cults, murders, unsolved mysteries, celebrity series, and catfish stories. He offers speculation about the motives of these perpetrators and their thought processes, potential suspects if they're unsolved, and all of this is with his sarcastic, humorous effect. <laughs> And that quick musical diddly means it's time for some 
quick history. According to Spotify, the first episode of Cult Leader was posted on September 13th, 2018, and he's posted a new episode every Monday ever since. The idea for Cult Leader was a continuation of his spooky, creepy Instagram stories that Spencer Henry had going on on his Instagram, featuring different cults, serial killers, etc. His merch line was launched in April of 2019, and as of this recording, Cult Leader has a little over 28k followers on Instagram, who are affectionately known as Cult Babes. My army of followers is a little bit smaller than that at this moment in time, but for y'all listening who self-identify as super fans of a pod about a pod, y'all should start brainstorming a cute name for yourselves. Coincidentally enough, it was also April of 2019 that Spencer began his spin-off series, Little Leader, which has to do with his followers sending in stories for the Cult Leader podcast. Here's a sneak peek from the second Little Leader, and this features a story about a 14-year-old killing her 11-year-old sister. The teen described as a mini-mom to her younger sister recalled the things she and her sister used to do together, like watching movies, making bracelets, and playing sports. Now I can only remember those times, she said. I can never get them back. Yeah, because you stabbed your sister 30 fucking times with a kitchen knife out of rage. During the hearings, lawyers discussed the findings of two doctors that who had evaluated the teen's mental health and agreed that she needed help controlling her anger. I would say so. Uh, officials revealed that the teen had formerly been in counseling after waving a baseball bat at her mother at age 11. Uh, she was forced to take on... Should I, just, should I just leave that phone ringing in there? That was my sister, sorry. Pause. <laughs> who, who did not stab me 30 times with a kitchen knife, and I'm so grateful. Uh, let's see. She was forced to take on many adult responsibilities because her mother, a single parent, worked two jobs off to support her daughters to save for private school, said the teen's lawyer, Michael Conway. Prosecutor Claudia Caston read aloud the teen's two-page statement that she gave police in which she said, my mind was in another place and the devil was in me. That is why my sister is dead. They then interviewed the devil, who said, I did not tell her to do that. That bitch is crazy. I mean, your sister's dead because you stabbed her. Can you imagine the devil, though? The devil's probably like, listen, I've done a lot of things, but that is, I did not tell that girl to do that. Uh, so on Tuesday, the girl said, we know the loss is great. The family's brokenhearted, blah, blah, blah. The teen will remain in a juvenile facility until her 21st birthday. After five years, her lawyers uh, will be allowed to request her parole. Uh, in a prepared statement, the teen said she plans to finish high school in prison and pursue a career in nursing. There is one person that I do not want uh, nursing me, and that is a girl who stabbed her sister 30 times with a knife. One thing that's neat about Little Leaders is you're often getting the most authentic reaction possible, because it's Spencer's first time even hearing about these stories himself. That being said, I'm going to take a quick break, and when I get back, it'll be time to learn a little bit more about this man, Spencer Henry. <laughs> We're back from our break, and you know what that means? It's time to meet the talent. In addition to being the host of true crime podcast Cult Leader, Spencer Henry has a day job as a content creator for L'Oreal and Redkin, which are both beauty brands, and I think Redkin has to do with hair care. His birthday is March 3rd, 1991, which means he's a Pisces. Woo, Pisces tribe. My birthday was March 10th, so happy belated birthday to us both. And I'm pretty sure he's a vegan or vegetarian from offhand comments. I haven't been able to deduce which one. I know he likes boys, and from his Instagram, I can see he's not afraid to get his nails did, which is another commonality you and I share, Mr. Spencer. Right now, my nails are the blue of my college, cougar blue, so that's always fun and festive to rock, am I right? Also, I'm not sure what this says about me, but I definitely had a certain picture of Spencer in my head that looked very different from how he actually appears in life. I literally was thinking of the stereotypical like emo teenager of dark hair swooping over the eyes and snake bites, which I don't know why I think that. Why brain? Why, why go to the stereotype like that? Turns out he's a tall, blonde, clean cut man very handsome tattoos so i don't know i found that to be pretty humorous when i stumbled across that it was not what i was picturing in my head at all he has a dog named hot dog 
and an older sister named Olivia, who's two years older, and a fellow hypochondriac. If you don't know what a hypochondriac is, it's somebody who always thinks that there is something wrong with them, like an injury or an illness. That's my understanding of it anyway. I have a cousin who definitely is a hypochondriac, and I say that because whenever we were kids and they would injure themselves, even if it was just a bruise, they would want a band-aid. And if you want band-aids for your bruises, you might be a hypochondriac. When asked if luck played a meaningful role in his life and business, Spencer responded, I don't necessarily think luck had much to do with it. I believe in hard work, dedication, and above all, manifesting. And I just thought that was a really neat quote because it reflects my worldview in a lot of ways. I'm a pretty spiritual guy. I believe in things like the law of attraction and positive affirmations. So it was cool to learn that Spencer also thinks about things in a similar way. Um, yeah, made me feel even closer to him. So I actually have another sneak peek locked and loaded for everybody. This is from episode 55, A Condo to Kill For, and it features a guest host, which happens to be his older sister, Olivia. And they were doing a Q&A at the end of that episode. And I wanted to share a little snippet about little Spencer from childhood. The final the question. The final question. When did you notice Spencer's passion for cults and murders? <laughs> well... Spencer has always loved mystery and the thrill, and he used to have us actually call him Detective S. He loved detective stories. He carried around a book that looked like, what was like that? The classified like classified folders. Classified yes. folders. He carried that around. He'd bring notepads and pens everywhere we went to take notes on yeah. clues that he saw. I've been watching out for since day one years so it totally makes sense that he loves all of this and i'm just so proud of everything he's done with cult leader and i'm very happy to be a part of it tonight cult leader is unique in the true crime category of my podcast library for a number of reasons Although, it isn't just my library, on several occasions Cult Leader has placed in the iTunes top charts for podcasts, so other people seem to think he's worth listening to as well. The show features a solo host with minimal editing or audio decoration, which lends a very simplistic listening experience, which leaves you hanging on his every word. Spencer's passion for true crime and enthusiasm for what he does shines through his voice, and his joy is contagious. The approachability of Pod X helped me to take the leap and just go for it with starting my own podcast. His uploads aren't perfectionistic. Despite how thorough Spencer's research is, his delivery of and reaction to the information is so human. After all, I'm a solo host with a lot of passion for my subject matter, as well as lots of joy to share. And sometimes I get in my head throughout the process of producing one of these episodes, and then I think to myself, what would Spencer do? I think, try to be as prepared as possible, and then sit your ass down, start recording, and be yourself. So that's what I'm trying to emulate here at A Pod About A Pod. Listening to Cult Leader feels like discussing a scary story over a campfire with your best friend. To summarize, the show is entertaining, it delivers shocking stories with quirky insight and sarcastic humor, he gives authentic reactions that are balanced with respect for the victims and their families, as well as helpful summaries throughout longer or more complicated stories to hold your hand throughout the whole process and not have you get lost in the twisty turns of the mysteries and whatnot. Your second to last sneak peek of Cult Leader is right around the corner. This is from episode 28, where he discusses the Blackburn cult. And the reason I decided to include this sneak peek is I feel like it epitomizes everything I just talked about as to why Cult Leader is worth the listen. So it's about three and a half minutes long, a little bit of a longer sneak peek for you. So cuddle up, get cozy, and I'll be right back. Hello and welcome back to Cold Leader. I'm your cold leader, Spencer Henry. And if you're new to the cult, all you have to do is uh, shave your head, throw on some Nikes, sacrifice your ex-boyfriend. <laughs> Just kidding. Don't do that. Uh, merch update. Allegedly, they're going to finish my merch store this week. It'll be back up and running for you guys. Uh, 
TV and movies update. So I hope all of you have started watching the act on Hulu. It is about uh, Gypsy Rose Blanchard and her mom, Dee Dee. And it is insane. It's on Hulu. It's like an episodic series. So there's only two episodes out right now. But I watched both of them. I liked them. I wasn't like obsessed i feel like yeah it's like a good dramatization but i feel like they could have made it like grittier i don't know if any of you saw it and would agree with that uh also this weekend i finally saw us well not finally it just came out but i saw us and i think jordan peele did a phenomenal job i saw some people like oh it's just hype blah 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 but i thought it was really good uh i think it's really cool how they time everything and um there's lots of like symbolism throughout the entire movie i don't know i thought it was pretty cool uh anyways for today's story we're taking it way back we're talking about the blackburn cult never heard of them good I had an either. Uh, even if you have, there's actually very little information about this case available. So I searched high and low for different, you know, articles, clips, really anything. So uh, hopefully I pieced together a story that kind of makes sense for you guys. You know, it's actually pretty interesting. So each episode, I usually have an idea and then do like hours and hours of research, pulling together facts from different sources, like uh, trying to get what matters, omit what doesn't. But it's so funny because, like, there's so many times where it's just the same shit everywhere online. Like, I tend to ignore clickbaity websites like BuzzFeed and Bustle because I swear they have the same, like, weird shit you've never heard of list. And it's, like, the same copied and pasted article. I don't know. But anyways, when I read about this case the first time, I think it was actually a cult babe submission. And once I started looking into it, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I, I gotta do this. Uh, the first thing that made this case stand out to me is the fact that it was founded by a woman. Pretty cool. You don't hear that a lot in the cult universe. Uh, the group went by several different names, most notably the Blackburn cult, but also sometimes referred to as the Eleven or the Divine Order of the Royal Arms of the Great Eleven. Really rolls off the tongue there. The story stars May Otis Blackburn. She was born in August of 1881, so she is now 138 years old. Just kidding, she's dead. Uh, she was born in Storm Lake, Iowa, wherever that is, and ended up in Los Angeles. Lots of fast forwarding in this case because it's from literally 100 years ago. So there's not a ton of backstory on how she ended up in LA. But what we do know is somewhere along the line, she gave birth to a daughter, Ruth. And when was this cult formed? Why? I believe it was in the 1920s. Cue the music. It's the Roaring Twenties, the start of an era. Sixty-year-old May Blackburn and her daughter Ruth are up to something, or were they on something? <laughs> it's enough of that. Room for improvement. I always feel the most self-conscious during this segment because, hey, I'm not an expert. I'm just a nerd who needed some place to spew his love for podcasts. So I started my own podcasts and I just want y'all to know I am very aware that my productions are far from perfect. And for example, I know my audio quality and my editing probably have some, you know, skill to be desired, but I'm practicing, I'm learning as I go. And that's what it's all about. I'm well aware of the irony of a podcast noob giving critiques on podcasts. But the thing is, I'm also an avid podcast listener. And that's sort of where I'm trying to come from, not with the perspective of a podcaster, but really a podcast listener. So just keep that in mind. I'm really not trying to be hypercritical. In fact, when I reached out to Spencer and asked his permission to use sound bites from the show for the sneak peeks, he literally said, of course, just don't talk shit about me. Spencer, I would never do that. You may not know this, but you and I are best friends and I don't talk shit about my friends. All I'm saying is everything has a little room for improvement. So this isn't me trying to hate on cult leader, okay? This is me trying to make sure that my show has a balanced perspective. So a couple suggestions I have for Mr. Spencer Henry. Or again, just areas, room for improvement. There are fluctuating levels of vocal enthusiasm, but this is very hard to do. 
Oh my gosh, you guys, I've been spending all day recording this episode, and it's because nine times out of ten, if I don't stumble over my words somehow in a clip, it just doesn't sound like my heart is in it. So look at me giving that as a critique, but it's so hard to do, and he's so much better at it than me. But here we are, that's bullet point number one. Bullet point number two, I would suggest more consistent implementation of trigger warnings. Again, it kind of comes with the territory that if someone's listening to a true crime podcast, they would hopefully have an idea of what they're getting themselves into, especially if they have some background on whoever the episode is featuring. So if the episode is on Jeffrey Dahmer, for example, hopefully you would know that he's a cannibal and wouldn't be horribly shocked to find that out. That being said, it seems like there might be a way to more consistently warn uh, the viewers of some of the more graphic content. He usually says something if something really out of left field is about to be um, disclosed. But again, just a little suggestion. Complex cases can be more difficult for the listener to follow if they're overwhelmed by details. I did mention this in the Why It's Worth It section. He usually gives these summaries that kind of recap the action and make it a little bit easier to follow who's who. But again, if there's a case that involves a lot of people with maybe similar sounding names or anything like that, it can get muddied up, especially if he happens to maybe be a little bit more scatterbrained that day, which happens to all of us. Last thing I'll mention is the minimal editing. For me, this is mostly a positive. I think it's sort of a unique staple of Cult Leader in a way that it's so conversational and minimalistic in the sound effects. In that Blackburn sneak peek you guys just listened to, it had a bit of everything. Like he did implement some sound effects and background music and things like that. So when he does choose to use it, it's like salt and pepper. It really kicks up the flavor and uh, it's used intentionally and sparingly. And for the most part, I feel like that's all to his advantage. All right, welcome to the peanut gallery, a.k.a. the end of the episode. So I've had a lot of fun talking about Cult Leader and everything that I love about it. And what's really funny to think is I would have never found the show if not for my friend here with me today. So right now I am joined with Taylor. Taylor, you want to say hello? Hi, Jordan. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to do this with you. Yeah, absolutely. So Taylor and I met because we are both uh, English majors slash literature and writing studies majors however you want to call us and we met at community college and now we both transferred to the same four year so that's been kind of cool we've been in a number of classes together yeah, and stuff exactly. so do you remember like the conversation that you know had you mentioned cult leader like I don't super remember how that got brought up uh, I don't I feel like you probably said something about podcasts and every time I hear podcasts I'm like stop do you listen to cult leader yeah so I think that's probably how it went down and like you know for the people you know who might be listening to this and don't know me in real life like how often do I talk about podcasts oh always <laughs> so I mean that's why we're here everybody is because you know why not talk about podcasts to people who actually care about podcasts instead of people like poor Taylor who are just sitting next me in class minding their own business <laughs> not necessarily <laughs> and like getting you know proselytized about the podcasting gospel tell me more about like that feeling like why do you feel the need to be like okay i want to share this um honestly it's really the only podcast i listen to it i listen to it religiously so Anytime someone mentions podcasts, I'm like, you have to listen to this one. I think the way Spencer tells stories is, is just so wonderful and he's so fun to listen to. So I think anyone who likes podcasts should listen to him. Yeah. So you're just like, okay, that's my one podcast. Yeah, that's if my someone, one. If someone wants to have this conversation with me, this is my contribution. Exactly. It's a great contribution though. Right, right. And I remember you telling me that the first time you listened into it and you're telling me what you thought you said that and I was like that's what it is about him yeah because I listen to other true crime podcasts as well right it's a right. pretty popular genre I would say and there's definitely different spins that different people go with but what I like about his is how bare bones it is it's almost like a campfire story or something yeah, where like yeah. you know he's telling you the hot goss and he's just like <laughs> yes. it's your best friend who's dealing the dish and you're just like you know they're eating it up with him so I feel like there's that like personal touch I suppose right because you know the other ones I listen to oftentimes have very like intense music maybe that's like building suspense okay. and things or um 
yeah, like scary sound effects or something like that, which at times can be hokey. You know, most of the time it does build atmosphere and stuff, but it's just a different feeling. It doesn't sound so much like a conversation. You're just hanging out with a buddy. It's more like, yeah, you're seeing a movie or maybe watching one of those documentaries instead of like dishing with a friend after watching one. Exactly, exactly. How did you find Cult Leader? So I found Cult Leader through the YouTube channel Glam and Gore. I've been watching Mikey since I was like a teenager, like 15. And then she started doing, you know, videos with Spencer and she mentioned his podcast and about how it's true crime, which really caught my interest. I love true crime. And I don't know, one day I was like, you know, let's let's try listening to a podcast. Yeah. Let's see how that feels. So, Were you like cleaning your house or something? That's on my ear. No, or, like... I was getting ready to get in the shower. Okay. And I was like, I don't really want to be alone with my thoughts right now. So I decided. Podcasts are wonderful for that. Right? I feel like that's how I've racked up so much like playtime in my podcasting app. I'm like, where do I have those hours? And I feel like it's yeah. just, you know, in those moments where otherwise I'd be by myself and I just want to hear somebody else's yeah perspective exactly. or something you know to take me away of whatever i have going on rattling around in the brain exactly it's so perfect for that um are there any like standout episodes or like you know moments that you would maybe recommend to people listening because one thing i try to do in my podcast is i splice in these sneak peeks which i try to garner from like the start of the show so some earlier episodes um if there's different episode types i try to like you know splice those in so i'll probably have a sample of what a little leader is like for example because he has his full length episodes and his little leaders and there's a couple other variations like he's done celebrity centric ones yes um and then the catfishing episodes if you've like heard those recently they've been (laughs) so funny but you know that's not really true crime i mean is catfishing a crime i don't i feel like it depends what happens as a result of the catfishing yeah it's a social crime i have to say my very favorite episode is the one on jean benet ramsey because he has Mikey of Glam and Gore as a co-host on that episode. So it all really came full circle for me. And then I also really like that one because I feel like I knew so much about that case, but then after listening to it, I was like, oh, I didn't know anything. Yeah. (laughs) It was really interesting. Like, I remember... I did ballet as a kid, and my old Italian grandma was like, you're going to be just like JonBenet Ramsey. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. And you were how old? I was, like, five. Oh, my gosh. And you knew who John Benet Ramsey was. Yeah, so I was hearing about her from such a young age, so it was really interesting hearing about that case. And was that the episode that both of them were featured on? Like that the they co-hosted together. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, no, so that was, so was perfect. the most perfect episode. It was the most perfect episode. That's amazing. Yeah. I absolutely love that. But if you had maybe a suggestion of something to change, what might that be? Um, if I had to say anything, I would probably say more little leaders because I think that's a really cool opportunity for his listeners to like engage and be a part of the podcast as well. I don't think there's not enough, but I think more would be cool. You, you wouldn't be mad if there were more. <laughs> I wouldn't more. be mad if there were more. Is there anything else that you want to like say about Cult Leader in terms of, you know, why you would recommend it to other people? Um, I think, well, I mentioned this before, but I think it's just really enjoyable listening to Spencer tell stories. Like the way he talks is just so like... I don't know it's so nice to listen to and like you said it is a really dark topic so that's hard to do but he somehow still brings joy with the way he tells the stories yeah. so I really like that is there anything you would maybe add to that disclaimer or maybe put in your own words of you know what people can expect in terms of the graphic nature of the content yeah I mean It's really graphic. Don't listen to it if you can't handle those kinds of descriptions. But I feel like that's kind that kind of goes without saying. I think 
I think anything that goes beyond just like a graphic murder, like things with abuse and stuff like that. I think Spencer mentions trigger warnings mm-hmm. before he ever discusses those. So if that's something that bothers people, then they should still be fine. Anything. Especially the John Benet Ramsey one, like I mentioned, that yeah. one has some moments that are really difficult to listen to. So be ready. Hey, cutting in real quick to give a short introduction to the last sneak peek it's from episode 27 about fred and rosemary west and quick trigger warning about jokes concerning incest bestiality and i think that's it remained in school until he was 15 and then he dropped out december of 1956 to take a job as a laborer on a farm From the age of 12 onwards, Fred claimed his mom introduced him to sex. When he was a teenager, he had already had a lot of experimentation with sex, but all within his own family. It really was how he was raised, though, so he looked at it as a normal thing, which you can't blame him, right? Because he was like a product of his environment that he grew up in. But he was also fucking animals, so that I think we can all collectively agree is just not cool. You know, keep your dick out of the goats, Fred. But... Do you think his mom ever got jealous? <laughs> She's like, oh, here comes that slutty chicken Fred's been eyeing. There is a pretty good chance, if he made it all the way to the end, that Mr. Spencer, Spencer Henry himself is listening to this. Yes! So is there anything that you would like to say to him if, you know, these sound waves are currently reaching his ears? Uh, oh my god. <laughs> I, isn't that crazy? That's the that crazy part of this so podcast. Crazy. Like, when he responded to my DM, I was like, oh my gosh, I exist in his universe yes! now. He knows I exist this is crazy and so taylor he's hearing your voice is there anything you'd like to say to him um spencer you are amazing i don't know you your podcast is so great and like i mentioned before when i've listened to it when i'm like not wanting to be alone with my thoughts it's been super helpful it's cheered me up when i was feeling down i don't know if that's horrible to say because it's about murder (laughs) but it makes you feel not alone you're like other people are also interested in these like creepy spooky stuff true true and just like the way spencer talks is awesome you're just the best <laughs> i know you we feel like we're best friends like yeah you, know, you may not know us hopefully after listening to this you also feel like all three of us are best friends now yeah all three of us are best friends. we are best friends we're <laughs> we letting are. you know spencer i hope you know we have your consent but you're on board <laughs> yeah. um but yeah i just wanted to make sure that you were able to say hello because there's a good Thank chance you. i know that is so exciting he knows you exist i know that's crazy we're cult babes we're official cult babes we are cult babes <laughs> all right thanks for listening everybody i'll get a new episode coming out uh in two weeks from today whenever that is not really sure but stay tuned not next sunday but the sunday after that all right taylor tell them to listen everybody listen <laughs> <laughs> all right you heard it here first i'll see y'all in two weeks later <laughs>